Hey guys, welcome back to my War Games hobby channel. I'm at the club again tonight, Farnborough War Game Society, and I'm playing a game with my mate Neil, and I'll just show you what it's all about. We're having another game of Muskets of Tomahawks, and we're using the Shackos and Blaylets supplement. And the army list, which we're using, is printed on here, which I'll go through with you in more detail later. So what's happened is, we just, we're not going to do one of the scenarios from the book because they're quite, not complex, but they're quite involved and we haven't done one yet and we haven't got long in an evening game so we've just decided to have a, an engagement battle. And we diced to see what units we're going to use or what side. We've got French and Austrians out tonight and Neil uh, diced to have the French which are coming on over there, that, cor that, that, that corner in fact. And, and you can see he's already moved on with his cavalry. We were just drawing the cards, Neil moved first, and that's so far what he's done. In fact, his cavalry and his light infantry are on, but your, the rest of yours are not, not on yet, are they? No, no, not in yet. They're taking their time. I'm playing Austrians. I've moved on everything except my cavalry and my artillery. They're not actually here yet. They're about to come on in a minute. So I've moved forward and I'm occupying a rocky ground here. There's another rocky ground over here which I'm now occupying with my skirmishes and I've got two big units of 16 men each of Austrian line infantry. The Austrians generally had big units anyway. The French when they come on over here are in fact four units, the same number of troops, um, 32 line infantry but they're going to be in four units of eight. And uh, there's Lan the Lancers are on in the middle there and the line infantry, these light infantry are all together in one group, whereas I've split mine up into two groups, as say one here and one there. So I'm not going to record the whole game, as you know, I just do highlights, so I'll let you know in, a, in, a, in another 15 minutes how we're getting on. Okay, so first update of this game, you can see the Austrians are moving up, the cavalry have just come on, and so have the artillery over here, but they're not unlimbered yet. Uh, but the interesting thing is the skirmishers are here and they're moving out of that rocky ground over there because they've got nobody near them and they're trying to move up the flank of the French. The French generally have moved forwards. Um, the fact they've got units of eight makes them a bit more flexible for movement and the Austrians being units of 16 are less so. But these unit, this unit here managed to turn around and then I paid um, command chip to open fire on the cavalry which were that come off this hill here and were here and I managed to kill two and then they bad I rolled a really bad morale test and they're now fleeing so um, the Austrians have got off to a good start oh incidentally over there also this unit half the unit open fire so you don't get a fire marker for that um, on the the French there, and you can see they lost two figures, but their morale was fine. So um, the first move, or the first bit of action, shooting anyway, has gone very much the Austrian way. Will it keep it up? I don't know. Right, so we'll report back later. Okay, another update. Um, you can see here these Austrians in the middle here now have lost five figures. They're getting um, pretty well battered by these guys over here who are doing a lot of very good shooting. Um, these Austrians open fire again on the unit that was there and they're, they're now fleeing. They've fled twice in fact. They're heading towards their own board. There's only five men left in that unit. The light cavalry have come around this hill and the infantry here have just turned to face them. So in a minute I'm sure they're going to get a volley fire on them. The Austrian skirmishers are moving up and are just about to um, open fire, I think, on those line infantry. So the, the cavalry here are still fleeing. They haven't actually stopped fleeing yet. They haven't had a turn to... Because if they keep fleeing this turn, they're going to be off the table. So the artillery here has moved up again. No point in an unlimbering because they didn't have a target, so I've moved them up. One more move, and the French artillery over there hasn't moved again yet, so they're still unlimbered and moving forward. So casualty-wise, the Austrians have lost 
five infantry, all from this unit in the middle here. And the French have lost three infantry and two cavalry. So the actual numbers lost are even on both sides at the moment. But the French have got two fleeing units that are in danger of leaving the table if they don't stop them. And there's no officer over there to stop them. And now that, that unit is too far away from its nearest officer as well. Although they've got at least two moves to do before they go off the table. But they need to try to restop them, if they can, the French commander, which is Neil. So, um, yeah, it's pretty even at the moment. Slight, maybe a slight advantage to the Austrians because they've got nothing fleeing. But um, we'll have to see what happens. It's my turn next. And the card I'm going to be playing is... Um, my own light infantry card which means I'll do something with these guys who've, who've contributed nothing yet so I need to move them forward and these guys I've either got to move them up or um, open fire on those infantry right okay back later okay well quite a bit has happened um, my artillery is unlimbered un but it hasn't fired yet these infantry are now down to eight figures, but because it was a big unit, it's still okay. It is actually shaken at the moment. Uh, over here, I've lost one figure from this unit, but they're fine. Now, the interesting thing is these lancers were over here, managed to move up to the hill and then charge those French infantry, which was rather nice. Um, the French lost three figures, the lancers didn't lose any. But the, the French rolled a really, really strong morale dice and stood there. So that meant the Lancers had to roll a morale dice and they rolled rubbish. So they've, they've fallen back. They got the fallen, they shaken or fall back. And because they're in combat, they have to fall back. So they've, they've bounced back, although they have killed three of the French infantry, which is a bit unfortunate for them. Uh, what else has happened? Oh, the, uh, the Lancers over here have recovered from their fleeing and are moving down this road to come behind, uh, no doubt, these artillery. And the other French infantry that nearly went off the board have recovered as well. So it's, um, it's interesting. So the total losses so far, if you look over here, uh, the Austrians have lost nine figures altogether. And the French have lost two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they've lost two extra cavalry figures. So a very slight advantage to the Austrians at the moment. But still pretty evenly, even game, to be honest. Right, so I'll let you know uh, what happens after the next move. Right, latest update. Uh, the Austrians here are now down to, as you can see, six figures. So they've gone from 16 down to six. There's their casualties. But they, uh, they're still in the game, albeit looking a little bit shaky now. These got shot at, didn't lose a figure, but they rolled a really bad morale dice, so they're fleeing. Uh, over here, the Lancers that fell back have moved up again. Um, and they are now, well, they, they, they'll be able to charge hopefully in a minute, maybe get a better result than last time. They fired volley fire at the cavalry. I don't know whether I mentioned that last time, but we did lose two figures. They had to come back here and then they got flee, but they've since recovered. So they're, they're ready to go again. Um, what else? You can see there's a, there's a few unloaded units around. They did volley fire. They've, they've got two load markers. So it's um, still fairly evenly poised. These infantry need to get into a better position now because they can't actually... Well, they can shoot at those if they can see them, but um, it's a bit of a debate yet as to whether they can see them or not. Right, so um, that's the update. The artillery still haven't fired, and the artillery over there, the French artillery, haven't even come on the table. Well, they, no, so they're on the table, but that's all they have done. They've not done anything since. So all those cards are waiting to come out. We are, in fact, in the third turn. We've gone through two complete packs of cards. Uh, we've probably got about another half an hour game to play, so we'll see how we get on. The Lancers did charge in against the four men that were in front of them. 
Uh, they killed two, lost one themselves, but when the um, French survivors rolled a morale test, they didn't roll good enough to stay there. They've routed. So the Lancers have been victorious. And fortunately, they're also out of the volley range of those guys, although they're still unloaded, which is a little bit worrying. So the Lulans have actually um, finally done quite well, although there's only five of them less, left now. So important um, win that was. Quick update. These guys uh, have gone into um, extended order now. Um, these are still, they haven't diced for them yet to stop them fleeing, but I haven't had the card come up. These did volley fire over here and killed two of those and they fell back. Uh, but the interesting thing was the officer that was there who didn't die from the shooting, he rolled a naught on the morale dice and he's now routed, he's, he's run away. My goodness, the French officer running away. You can see the lancers there have moved up in front of the artillery and they just hope they'll be able to charge before the artillery open fire, otherwise I'm in trouble. Uh, these lancers are still trying to come around the flank, but they're not getting very far at the moment. Right, so we finished the game. The last thing that happened was the gun here managed to open fire on the unit on the hill. And as you can see, they killed three. The unit had to fall back um, shaken. Um, and because I've got much, well, not much, I've got quite a few less casualties than the French, uh, the Austrians have won, not by a massive amount. It was a close game, but the Austrians certainly have the upper hand. And if that cavalry do manage to, they, they did charge the artillery. They only killed two men. They lost one themselves. I'm surprised, and, and the artillery was pushed back. In fact, I don't know whether, in fact, that gun they leave the gun behind, Neil. Do they? After melee, they wouldn't take a gun with them, would they? Yeah. So I imagine that gun is abandoned, and the, the, the two men have fallen back. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a good game. The light infantry didn't lose many at all. The Austrians didn't lose any men. The French lost one man there and none there. So the skirmishers actually were doing quite well. And it was the light infantry that were taking the casualties. So it was a very interesting game, yeah, good fun. And um, had we played another hour, I don't know, maybe the Austrians would have just consolidated their win. But, um, we had a bit more to play, but the Austrians certainly have got the upper hand at the moment. So, good game. Thanks, Neil. OK, so just a quick recap on that, uh, that game. Um, the first thing was that the, the big units of Austrians, um, 16 men, is pretty useful. It makes them a little bit cumbersome, of course. They're not as manoeuvrable as small units of eight, which the French were in but they can take a lot of punishment. They stay in formation because they're always going to be, well, until they get below six figures, they stay in formation. And they always get the plus two for being a big unit. So, and, and even plus one if they're more than six or six or more. So that really is useful, but it does say they're, they're a little bit more cumbersome than the French. Uh, the game itself, um, the, the French cavalry were unfortunate to get caught with volley fire, they lost two figures and they fled, which was on a bad morale dice, which meant that it, although they did recover eventually, it took them too long to get back into the action. They were coming down that road uh, to take the Austrian artillery out and had we had another um, deck of cards to go through, if we'd had time, they might well have done that. But by then the um, the Austrian Uhlans would have taken out the remainder of the artillery unit that was facing them because they'd run away from their gun anyway. And then they would have been behind the rest of the French force. So I think it was inevitable that the Austrians were always going to win, unless, of course, they started getting a load of disastrous dice rolls. But it looked like they were they were on top when we ran out of time. We, we have to be out of... Uh, the room that we're in by 10 o'clock so although we get there at six by the time we start it's probably nearer seven um, we have to finish about quarter to ten so we just run out of time in the end we got three virtually three complete um, moves done that's through the deck three times a uh, fourth one would have been interesting but I still think it would have gone the Austrian way we, we did make one mistake we had two skirmish officers with only 12 men we should have only really had one but at least we both had that so we, we, no one had the advantage 
And it's interesting that we only had, we're only having eight cavalry. We weren't allowed to have a cavalry officer. And that, that does reduce the effect of the cavalry to a degree, which is probably not a bad thing. If you're going to have a big cavalry game, uh, then you've got to have at least uh, 10 to have an officer anyway, 10 figures. Um, so, yeah, I thought the game went really well. Uh, the French got off to a very poor start with some uh, took early casualties earlier and the morale uh, made them sort of suffer a little bit. The Austrians always had the upper hand from then on, although the, the casualties did get evened out towards the middle of the game. The fact that the French had two units that were virtually out of the game because they'd fled and they would never get back into the action before the end of the game that was the difference. So it was a good game, really enjoyed it again. I always do with these rules, I do like them. There's a few things that I might change to make house rules. But beyond that, um, it gives a really good game. I find them easy to play. Um, we played enough games now to know basically what we're doing. And um, the more we play, the more it will become uh, even more enjoyable. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And. Um, not sure when the next one is, but we'll I'll record it and um, put it on YouTube for you to watch. Okay, look after yourself, and I'll see you again soon.